Yo, what is good, y'all? I am back, your tribal chief, Anthony. Back in the building today, we're diving into Dark Matter, that mind-bending sci-fi show on Apple TV Plus that just got weirder than a first date at the zoo. I mean, these alternate herbs are wild. One minute, you're dodging killer bees. The next minute, you're in a pandemic. <coughs> If you're curious about the book that inspired this trippy adventure, there's a link in the description below. But first, let's get into it. This episode is called Wordless. Now, hold on. That could mean a lot of things, right? Maybe it's the silent film homage moment we get this episode. Or it could also be because Amanda is left wordless, hard body, especially when confronted by Blair about her affection towards Jason 1. Now, folks, do me a solid, smash that like button, subscribe, or just watch more of these awesome reviews. If you stumbled onto this episode five without seeing the first four episodes, I got you covered with the link to the playlist, chilling in the description below, and sticky as the first comment. This episode opens with Jason and Amanda picking a random door. Jason tries to convince everyone he's feeling safe and happy. Yeah, right. Dude was sweating more than a cast member on Dancing with the Stars before he opened that door. And when Jason opens the door, these two find themselves in a Kevin Costner movie with the entire planet submerged underwater. These two barely make it out alive as they become completely submerged while inside the box before closing the door. Jason decides to admit that he was actually feeling overwhelmed with pressure when he opened the door. We fast forward a bit and find Jason and Amanda drying their clothes in a fake ship shelter, looking like they just got shipwrecked on Gilligan's Island. Real talk, they really were giving me survivor vibes in this moment. Anyway, they're trying some brain exercises to help them navigate their way around when they're in the box, but let's be honest. Jason, uh, Jason's not good at this. Like, he comes off as coordinated as a newborn giraffe on roller skates. Amanda schools him a bit and teaches him how he should be thinking about this. Anyway, they fall asleep in the corridor because apparently that's a thing you can do. And they wake up back inside the box. And they're back inside the box after Ryan's gamma radiation wears off. They open the box, not knowing what awaits, and end up in what looks like a deserted velocity lab. Spooky vibes. I mean, it's like Silence of the Lambs meets World War Z. The only company they find is a decomposing corpse and they hear some Jurassic Park worthy growls coming from down the hall. Needless to say, they're out of here faster than you could say Multiverse of Madness. But hold up. Hold up. Who is that? It's Blair 2. Now, some of you might be lost, so here's a quick recap. We haven't met Blair 2 yet, but we know Blair One from Earth One, who's tight with Jason's wife, Daniela. Back in episode two, Layton Two told us that Blair Two is a Velocity employee who went on the first three-man trip into the box. Jason Two went in later with a sob story about feeling guilty and wanting to help find the missing team. Amanda and Blair catch up while Jason 1 spills the tea about Jason 2 being a lowlife who stole his wife. Apparently Blair 1 on Jason 1's world is a bioethics lawyer. Fancy. Jason and Amanda continue catching up with Blair while also touching her shit, eating her food, and low-key judging her. Blair admits that she's been on this world for three months, which is wild considering. Wait, what? We see a security camera footage of a different 
Blair, arriving on this same world a whole year ago. And guess what she brought as a housewarming gift? A swarm of gigantic killer bees! Talk about an unwelcome guest. This Blair showed up with more bees than a Beyonce concert after a visit to a Texas apiary. And they look like they came straight out of a horror movie. They just completely overwhelmed the scientists. Apparently, even with these killer insects all over the place, Blair 1 is just shilling on this world. Priorities, I guess. Oh. We cut to Jason 2 and Layton 1 prepping for their multiversal plot. This whole multiverse thing feels like a metaphor for gentrification. Layton's scared, which is fair. Jason 2 assures him this is normal. Here's where things get interesting. Jason 2 explains that the box doesn't give them access to the entire multiverse, but rather worlds that somehow branched off from their own. Recently, Jason 1's world is the prime timeline in this scenario. And Jason 2 is from a branch timeline, invading Jason 1's life and selling multiversal tours like a shady timeshare salesman. And more mind-blowing info, Jason 2 confirms that even if Ryan's gamma radiation wears off while you're outside of the box, it'll still be there when you return convenient. So Jason 2 and Layton 1 are off on their multiversal tour. Meanwhile, Blair sends Amanda and Jason 1 off with some travel notes. Now, I wasn't paying close attention to this at first, but hold on for a second. This Blair looks a little rough. Like she's been having a rough decade, you know? When Amanda goes in for a hug goodbye, Blair pulls back like she's dodging a rogue beat. And here comes the next big clue. Blair tells them it takes more than just focusing on a specific world to get there. Apparently, everything messes with the connection. Fear, random thoughts, even subconscious desires. She says even with all her training, she couldn't control it. Remember this, folks, because it opens up a whole new can of worms about how deep this show is getting. Back to our heroes. Amanda and Jason 1 return to the box and are shook. Jason 2 can actually navigate the box and land on the earth he wants. He does this all the time. Jason 1 explains how he made a life-altering choice when he was younger. He had to choose between a life of science or Daniela. That's the point where his life diverged from Jason 2's. That's the moment Amanda starts questioning everything, especially her relationship with Jason 2. Jason tries a clever trick to get back to his world. And guess what? It kind of works. They head to what seems like Jason's house, but the whole city is deserted. Like something out of a 28 Days Later book. Jason finds Daniela, but she's sick. Apparently, their son isn't around anymore, and she thinks Jason was taken by authorities and wasn't around anymore either. If you didn't notice, this is not Jason's world, folks. It's some kind of pandemic earth. They have a tearful reunion anyway, and Jason even gives Daniela some morphine that he was given because... He doesn't want her suffering. Back in the box they go. Jason's pretty shaken, and this time Amanda gives Jason a full-on cuddle. They gotta figure out what went wrong with their plan. They try again, and this time when they get to the Earth, there are people. Progress. We then get some quick cuts here and there, and we see Jason 2 in the bathroom with Daniela 1, who's freaking out because Jason's making big decisions without her input. She wants answers, damn it. Meanwhile, Jason 1 walks in on Daniela in their bedroom. But she's calling 911 because apparently her ex 
husband, Jason, is supposed to be in prison. And he just showed up in her house with a knife. Yikes. <laughs> Jason's officially having a... When keeping it real goes wrong. Yeah, this, this isn't Jason's earth either. Later, we get a touching mother-daughter moment for Amanda. She visits her mom on this world, but sadly, her own Amanda isn't alive anymore. After a brief but emotional encounter, they head back into the box for another shot at multiversal travel. We switch back to Jason 2, who's back on Earth 2, and he's restocking on gamma radiation. A staff member casually mentions that a few people showed up looking for Jason a few days ago. You know, rather than calling someone. She just tells him this. Jason 2 then returns to Earth 1 with Layton 1. He shows Layton that he was able to secure... 50 new vials. Then he promises after he sends Layton on his way to venture off into the multiverse, he's gonna seal the box. Anyway, just on this earth. And that's a wrap. Whoa, did we learn a lot in this episode or what? This show keeps showing us that there are levels to this story. Let's break it down. You can always see and return to the box even after the injection wears off that allows you to perceive a superposition state. So you can go somewhere, stay there, and then maybe at some point in the future, you can come back. Also, was that Blair we saw earlier, the same Blair who left Earth 2? Remember, Jason and Amanda saw messed up versions of themselves earlier, and then there's the Blair who showed up a year ago with the killer bees. Now, Blair on this latest Earth looked kind of sickly, just like Daniela from the pandemic world. Coincidence? Plus, Blair mentioned being in the box, or at least on this world, for three months. Layton too talked about his first team going into the box, but was it three months ago? Was it a year ago? I might have to go back and see unless any of you guys know. Let me know in the comments if you find it first. Anyway, that's all I have for this one. Listen, if you're new to the Lost Levels reviews, hit that like button, subscribe, and check us out next week. Until then, I'm going to check you all later. Acknowledge me! Peace.